Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tadu Boy, the lead pastor of Wellman Heights. I greet you this morning with Christ's joy. It is a day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. That's what the Bible said. Regardless of what our situation is or the circumstances that we have brought into this place, we've made up our mind that we're going to enter His gates with thanksgiving and come into His court. We praise this morning. Hallelujah. We're glad that you've joined us. You've come to join us uh, in this live broadcast. Our 845 service as we go live. We're so blessed that you have come to be part of the worship of the Lord this morning. As we come to our final, our grand finale, our conclusion of our series, Your Life Ever After. And this morning, uh, we're going to wrap it all up uh, in a nice little package uh, with a message entitled, Are You Saved? Don't get this wrong. Don't get this wrong. Oh, it's going to be good. Why don't you come with me? Let's go deep into the Word of God in Matthew chapter 25 and look at two parables that Jesus Christ gave to illustrate how we need to be ready for the second Christmas, the second coming. I'll come back and pray with you. In Jesus' mighty name, receive the Word. Amen. boy it's Christmas already and it seems like it was only yesterday we were greeting each other Merry Christmas I, am, I the, am I the only one that feels like time is flying by fast <laughs> we haven't even blinked and it's Christmas already I'm telling my wife, so what's the budget? <laughs> and Santa Claus is in town with his list of people who have been nice all year on the one side and people who have been bad and naughty. No, I don't mean you guys here, I'm just you making illustration. People who have been bad and naughty on the other side. I ask the person next to you, you haven't been naughty, have you? You haven't been naughty, have you? And in a few days, Christmas will be over. And Santa will be gone back. Only to be back again next year. But the one, according to our text, we just read about, who's coming, who's coming, all who love is appearing are looking forward to, very soon, won't be coming from the North Pole. And he won't be riding in one horse open sleigh no church the one who we're told to watch out for in the text we just read is coming from heaven <laughs> glory to god and as the scripture says he will be riding on the clouds shining like a sun oh excuse me pardon me the name of the one we're waiting for is not Fred Claus. And his helpers coming with him are not the helps. In case you haven't read your Bible, <laughs> the name of the one we're waiting for, his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who will be coming with the holy angels. Hello, somebody. Church, what I've come to say to you is it's so easy to forget the reason for this season. In the household and bustle of Christmas, it's so easy to forget the reason why we celebrate Christmas. The, the reason we celebrate this season, watch this, is not only that Jesus came down from heaven on earth. See, 
I know you know why we celebrate Christmas. But I want to show you another angle that you may not have thought about. I want to give you the whole picture. You may have just one part of the picture. I, I know you know that the reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus came down from heaven to earth at the first Christmas. Am I right? But that's not the only reason we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrate this, is, this season also because this same Jesus is coming back again. And soon it will be Christmas all over again. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I know Michael Jackson may have sung Santa Claus is coming to town. I'm trying to sound, sing, sound like him. <laughs> he's making a list and he's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. But what I'm preaching to you today is that my Jesus himself says to tell you through the mouth of Matthew the gospel writer that he is coming back to town again. Because you see, if the Bible predicted his first coming in the first advent and if what the bible said would happen has happened in bethlehem of judea isn't it logical for us then to believe that the second predictions of his second coming will happen too oh talk to me somebody if the first happened isn't it logical to think the second would happen too? If the God can make the first happen, can that same God make the second happen? Talk to me, somebody. Watch this. Watch this. For example, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. You know the verse where God said to the serpent, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise you on the head and you will bruise him this of course is the first enunciation of the virgin birth as we often think the first announcement of the virgin birth didn't come from the angels no it came first from the mouth of God the Father himself. But, but, but what I want to show you here is, there are two prophecies right away. Right here in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Bam! Like that. Two prophecies. Is it okay if I just take my time to teach you this morning? Oh, okay, okay. I'm laying a foundation for where we're going this morning. I want to show you that your God is a promise keeper. I want to show you that your God is a miracle worker. I want to show you this one that your God is a way maker. Amen. Watch this, watch this, watch this. See, we didn't just choose that song. That song was leading us to where God is bringing us. Watch this. The first promise of his first coming is the bruising of the heel of the woman's seed. Notice the word, her seed, singular, zara in Hebrew. Not her seeds. One seed, singular. And that can only refer to one person. Church, who is the one woman's seed? Everybody said that's Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we know his heel was bruised at Calvary at his first coming. That prophecy was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. But there's another coming, Dickin. Right in here. There's another coming that is yet to be fulfilled in this verse. And that is the bruising 
of his head. Ah. If Jesus is the seed of the woman, who said are we talking about here? That has to be only one person. The one person that God was speaking to in the garden. And that would be who? The devil, serpent. So, we're talking about setting the devil here. We're not just talking about Jake the snake here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jake the snake that is giving you, being snaky to you is no word. What I'm talking about here, I'm talking about the real one, the real McCoy. And we know that Satan is still roaming around in this world like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. So he hasn't been bruised yet. But when Jesus comes again, the second half of this verse will be fulfilled. Just as Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 says, and the devil, somebody said the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast, you know the beast? We talked about, we, 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 we saw him. No, no, no. God forbid we didn't see him. We're, we're talking about the Antichrist. <laughs> well, no, you don't, want to see, you don't want to see the Antichrist. <laughs> you don't want to be here to see the Antichrist. It, it's more like we, we talked about him last Sunday. He said, where the beast and the false prophets are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's when Jesus will crush the serpent's head for good oh that's a good word for somebody right there who has been getting some beating from the devil lately you, you, you can just go ahead and stomach him for a little while more because the word of the Lord says to tell you when Jesus comes again it will be all over for the devil and the Lord will make him pay for all the pain he has cost you and the Lord will make him Oh, you're not hearing me. The Lord will make him pay for all the aches that he has given you and for all the trouble he has made you. Somebody shout yes! You're wondering what is going to happen to this devil that has been after me all day. Wait for a while. God isn't finished yet. Because this Pharaoh you see today. <laughs> Don't let me go there. Don't let me go there. And I'm showing you all that. So you can be encouraged to understand that if Jesus came the first time, then he will come the second time. Oh, oh the second coming will be the sequel of the first except the second won't be like the first in so many ways for you see in his first coming oh i feel like preaching right about now in his first coming he was wrapped <laughs> in a swaddling clothes but in the second coming he will be adorned in a royal robe In his first coming, he was surrounded by sheep and shepherds. But in his second coming, he will be accompanied by ten thousands of his holy saints. That's you and me. In his first coming, the door of the inn was closed on him. But in the second coming, the doors of the heaven will be open for him. The first coming, he came for the crucifixion. Whew. This stage here is so prophetic. It just dawned on me. Exactly the picture of what I'm telling you. You cannot talk about this coming without looking to 
the cross. And why did he go to the cross? He came from heaven to earth. To show the way to where? To heaven. And then when he shows the way to heaven, it is to bring you to where he is. So that Jesus said, where I am, you may be also. But for him to come and bring you to where he is, he has to come again. <laughs> I, I'm showing you the first and the second so that in the first Christmas he came for a crucifixion but the second Christmas is coming for a coronation the first time he came in humiliation but the second time he's going to come in exhortation I say in his first coming the Bible says he came as a lamb of God but in second coming he's going to come as a lion of the tribe of Judah oh you're not feeling the word this morning I wish I had somebody who would help me praise the name of the Lord I said I wish I had a church that will help me exalt the promise keeper the miracle worker the way maker hallelujah hey! you may be seated that's why I love his appearing that's why I'm glad soon and very soon it's going to be Christmas all over again If you thought, Larry, if you thought it's first Christmas brought you justification, wait. It's second Christmas will bring you glorification. You thought it's first Christmas brought you transformation, but wait. It's second Christmas is going to give you and bring you transfiguration. Oh, 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 at the first Christmas. He came to his own but the bible said his own received him not but at the second christmas every knee will bow every tongue will confess hey! Hey! including herod and pilate and madonna and vladimir putin and lebron james ah uh, every tongue will confess that jesus is Lord oh 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 I could go on and on and on on that all day but the thing I want you to really see this morning is as we come to our text whenever the Bible speaks about the second coming you notice that the focus is never on the date or the time. The focus is never on the when because the when is settled. The Bible says thy word, oh Lord, is settled forever in the heavens. When God says something about you or for you or to you, it's done. The, 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 the when is never an issue. The when is guaranteed. There's never an argument in scripture as to whether Jesus will or not come back. But the focus is always on the what. It's always on the what should we be doing while we're waiting for the second Christmas to come. Give me the light point. You're doing well, Brother Franzo. Give me the light point. Because you see, that danger, listen to me very carefully, this is light point. That danger of not preparing for the second Christmas is just as real as the predicament of those who missed the first Christmas. 
Oh, somebody missed that. You see, just as many missed that first Christmas, I did a message a long time ago when I first came here. On the title of the message was "Those Who Missed the First Christmas." A lot of people missed the first Christmas. Herod was one of them. All the priests and the scribes were one of them. Jerusalem was one of them. The old people in Jerusalem, they were just busy doing their own thing. Nobody even knew Jesus was born except the shepherds. Just as it was real that many missed the first Christmas. Jesus is giving us these parables in our text to warn us that it is very possible for us to miss the second Christmas too when it comes the second time. And I believe, Lady Marie, that it's my duty as the watchman of God in this house who's been standing here in front of you sounding the alarm throughout this series not only to warn you that he's coming but to also prepare you for his coming turn to your neighbor turn to your neighbor and tell him you don't want to miss the second christmas you don't want to miss the second christmas no 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 you don't want to miss the second christmas and in our text jesus gives us two parables to illustrate that key the two key preparations to get you ready for the second christmas let me ask you how many of you are already preparing for this christmas 2018 few hands yeah, few hands okay how many of you have got all your shopping done only one hand okay well, how many of you have got it started Okay, okay, let me ask you, what did you get for me? Oh, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. I love surprises. Don't tell me, surprise me. But just like you're preparing for this Christmas, Jesus is showing us two key preparations. You got to get ready for two before the second Christmas comes. Every Christmas needs its preparation. The first Christmas got prepared long time ago. <laughs> I did a, a series on, uh, on Christmas time one time, and we look at the genealogies in Matthew chapter 1. 42 generations, Lady Sashi, that it took God to prepare for the first Christmas. 42 generations. And Galatians 4 4 says, in the fullness of time, <laughs> God sent. For the son born of a woman. Preparation. Everything that is worth doing requires preparation. If the first require preparation, don't fool you, don't fool me to think the second would not equally require preparation. And so Jesus in this parable gave us two key preparations. You must get ready for before the second Christmas come. Let me quickly share them with you. I won't be giving you an expository commentary on this text, uh, on these two parables. I'm only going to give you an overview. Lord willing, next year, uh, uh, I, I'm suspecting the Lord might be leading us to do a series on the parables of Jesus. Then I can break it all down for you. But this morning, I would, what you want to see, let you see quickly is the two key points from these two parables in Matthew 25. Who here is ready to receive? All right. Number one, prioritize your eternal destiny. Prioritize your eternal destiny. Here in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 3, 13, Jesus is telling us the parable of the ten virgins to illustrate the uttermost importance, uttermost importance of getting our priorities right. That's a struggle for some of us. 
if we care to if you if you care to know why your why your life is so all over the place where sometimes you don't even know where you are is because you haven't got your priorities right it's a struggle getting Paul said this one thing this one thing if I stop you and ask you what's this one thing in your life oh pastor don't make it one thing what about two things <laughs> what about three things Paul said this one thing that's the epitome of priority Jesus told this this, this, this parable to show us the uttermost importance of getting our priorities right some things in life you can get wrong right some things in life you can get wrong i got a lot of wrong in my math test <laughs> but this one you don't want to get wrong tell your neighbor you can't get this one wrong jesus says in verse one jesus says in verse one then I told you I wasn't going to do an expository teach, teach, preaching, but the teacher in me just, when I see the word then, he just jump up and go. Oh. Meaning, based on the disciples' question of how they are to prepare for his coming in Matthew chapter 25, all this Matthew 25, 26 is eschatological about the end times, 24, 25, 26, end times. And they're going, okay, Jesus, if you're, if you're going to come back, what should we do? Jesus said, then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2. And five of them were foolish. Moros. In Greek, moros. From where we get our English word, moron. In French, in French it's moron. No? How do you say moron in French? Moron. Oh, what do you call it? Eh? Oh, you just say stupid. Oh, stupid. <laughs> you don't want to call somebody stupid. <laughs> it's, it, it's where we get the word moron. But Jesus says five were foolish and five were prominous wise. Now, if you had just read verse 1, if you had just read verse 1, if verse 1 is all you read, you couldn't have been able to tell the difference between these ten virgins. They all set out to do the same thing. Verse 1 says, they all went out to meet, give me verse 1, they all went out to meet the bride. In, in fact, they all looked similar on the surface. Just like it's difficult, isn't it, sometimes to tell who are the Christians sitting in the church. Come on now. How many know just because you're sitting in the church doesn't make you a Christian? Any more than you sitting in the McDonald's make you a hamburger. <laughs> Come and eat me. I'm making some of you hungry now. But stay with me. Stay with me. Suppose... We were to ask these ten virgins, which today we will call bridesmaids. That's what they are today, bridesmaids. Suppose we were to ask these bridesmaids, ten of them, to stand in front of us this morning. In no particular order. Would you have been able to tell who is foolish and who is wise? Oh, oh I got an idea. I got an idea. I need ten female volunteers right now. Ten female volunteers. Quick, 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 quick. Come up if you're a female. I need ten of you for free. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Good. You, you, you line up here. Line up this way. Somebody's already picking tight. I, I need ten, ten female, female, females here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. Quick. Young or old? Look at this one that's sitting down there. All right. Good, good, good. Ten of you. I still need more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need one more. Ten. Excellent. Thank you. Don't they look beautiful like a bridesmaid? Come on, church. Let me give it up for them. All right. 
Now, you guys don't say nothing. This is your question now. Now, can you tell which are one of which ones of these ladies are foolish and which ones are wise? I said, don't say no. See. <laughs> All of them are females, right? At least they all look female to me. <laughs> all have been invited to the wedding banquet, right? Yeah. All the ten of them went out for the bridegroom, right? Yeah. All ten of them had their lamps in their hands, right? Yeah. Verse 1 says so. In fact, all ten fell asleep According to verse 5, it says they all, verse 5, it says they all got drowsy and began to sleep. So that's not what made them wise and foolish. That's not what made some of them wise and foolish because they all slept. But oh, don't let appearance fool you. You've heard that saying, appearance can be like, like the story of the guy who fell in love with a, with a soap, with an opera singer. Right away, he fell in love with him, with her. Uh, he fell in love with her voice uh, and, 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 and without even really getting to know him, to know her. And and all he knew was, was, was she had this very beautiful singing voice. And he was convinced that he could live happily ever after with a voice like that. He hardly noticed that this opera singer was a little older. And that she, she walked with a limp. So after courting her, they had this wild wind marriage wedding on their honeymoon night. At the hotel, as they began to get ready for their first night together, he watched. His chin dropped. His mouth gaped open. As the woman plucked out a glass eye, plopped it in a container <laughs> on the night bed table. She pulled off a wig. Now, 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 I, I'm told these days you don't call it wig, you call it hair unit. Mm -hmm. She pulled off a hair unit, <laughs> ripped off her high lashes. She wasn't finished yet. She then took off her false teeth and then proceeded to take off, proceeded to take off her prosthetic leg. And she smiled at him as she, as she slipped right into the bed beside him. And he asked, well, darling, what do you think? And the guy stunned and horrified, jumped out of the bed, screaming, oh, for goodness sake, sing, woman, sing. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody next to you, appearance can be deceiving, appearance can be deceiving. The truth is, you can't pick out which of these five are foolish and which are wise. We could argue about it. We could all agree that number two here. <laughs> See, I don't know. <laughs> That number two here looks like she's been bored. She's a little bored. Maybe she's a foolish bridesmaid. Or number five here. One, two, three, four. Five. Or number five here. Oh, number five. 
she's been chewing gum. <laughs> she's been chewing gum in church. And how wise can she be? How about number seven here? Very wise. <laughs> I said, don't say nothing. You could tell. You could tell. On number seven here, there's no way that she's a wise person. <laughs> and frankly, frankly, when you just take a look at these ten ladies in front, who went? It's always nine. Don't make me the foolish one. <laughs> what are you guys doing to me? I said I want ten. You're telling me I can't count? Okay, we're going to make them ten. We're going to make them ten. There's, there's an invisible one here. There's an invisible one here. <laughs> you guys, you church. I, why are you guys sitting down there? You... And quite frankly, when you just let, take a look at this nine, <laughs> you're making me change the parable. These ten that are here, they're not very easy distinguished which ones are foolish and which ones are wise. Because looks can be deceiving. Let's give our nine bridesmaids a wonderful hand of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Love you all. But the searcher of the heart, the one who knows what man don't know, the one who sees from the inside out, says five were foolish and five we're wise. Good God of heaven. They may all look alike. They may all talk alike. They may all walk alike. But oh, they are all so different. And this is the message of the parable, verse 2. Verse 2. Five of them we're, we're foolish. And five of them were wise. That is the message of this parable. You say, in what way, Pastor? Jesus' answer in their priorities. Okay. Our text says in verse 3 what made the foolish to be foolish. Is that they took no oil. Verse 3, quick. They took no oil with them. They took no oil with them. Knowing that the bridegroom may come at any time of the night. So that in verse 8. When the bridegroom finally came. <laughs> they were begging the wise sisters. To give them some of their oil. And church, if the oil in this parable represents the saving faith in Jesus, if this oil represents the saving grace of Jesus, then what Jesus is teaching us here is salvation is not something you can borrow. It's not enough to have the promise of the first Christmas. Oh, Lord, let me preach this message. That's why I'm telling you. I'm going to show you a different side of Christmas you've never heard before. It's not enough to have the promise of the first Christmas without the preparation of His second Christmas. Don't start celebrating this Christmas 
without the preparation for the next Christmas. Oh, you're not hearing me. What, what, what's, what's the first Christmas going to do for you? If you're not ready for the second Christmas. I say salvation is not something transferable. Salvation is not something inheritable. I, I know you love to sing, I got a mother over there where Jesus is. But the question is, does she have a child coming over there where Jesus is? Are you saved? Don't get this wrong. Because the Bible says, the faith of your mama can't save you. Because your papa was a deacon in the church, won't save you. You can't borrow somebody else's grace. You can't borrow somebody else's oil. No, no, no. You got to get one yourself. You got to have yourself. I got to have my own. You got to have your own. And every person here must take his own life right before God. You can't share my oil. Come on, tell the person, tell the person next, next to you, get yours, get yours, get yours. 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 There's more way it is. Get yours. Why are you looking for mine? Get yours. My anointing will do much for you. Get yours. Watch this. It's all good to know that salvation is not transferable and trans salvation is not inheritable. But that's not what really got my attention in this parable. Well, we shall have time. <laughs> I already know that I can't ride on somebody else's coattail to get me into heaven. You can't. The Bible said it's appointed unto man. To die once. Everybody's appointed. My appointment time is different from your appointment time. So how are you going to ride on my coat? But that's not what gets me. I don't know. I know you can't transfer salvation. I know you know you can't transfer salvation. But that's not what really gets me in this parable. But what really gets to me, what really got to me in this parable is that even after the foolish virgins, listen, went out to buy some oil, and they came back knocking on the door. Verse 10 says, they went let in. <laughs> the door was shut. And only those who were ready went in. Did you catch that? Why? I told you to always interact with your Bible when you read. Why when they let in? Even after the foolish virgins went out to buy some oil and came back knocking on the door. Verse 10. Why when they let in? No, that's not the answer. Why weren't they let in? No, that's not the answer. Why weren't they let in? That's not the answer. Because that's my very point. Why would this door shut on them? You're giving me back my question. Why weren't they let in? Let me, let me give it to you. The answer is right in verse 12. In what Jesus said. Glory to God. But he answered, truly, truly, I say unto you. <laughs> I do not know you. Whoa! You mean all this time that it looks like these sisters were for real? 
They weren't really for real. They looked saved. They talked saved. They said, Lord, Lord, open. Verse 11. Give me verse 11. They even called him Lord, Lord. They acted saved. But he answered and said unto them, Truly I say unto you, I do not know you. Meaning, they really went saved. Oh, oh, we're talking about prioritizing for your eternal destiny now. Because there are some things you can't afford to get wrong. And your salvation is number one on that list. Come on, talk to me somebody. To be sure, these foolish virgins were busy getting excited for the wedding. They got excited getting the wedding dress. The truth to match. I'm sure they got excited getting the lamps too. But the most important thing and essential, they left till it was too late. And that is getting to know the bridegroom. Oh, oh, they call him Lord, Lord in verse 11. But Jesus also says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Jesus himself says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Which is what? Which is what? Meaning, give me the lifeline. Give me the lifeline. Write this down. Meaning, this is good. You got to write this down. Everybody have to write this down. This is tweetable. Give me the lifeline. Quick. Meaning, if your faith hasn't changed you, then your faith hasn't saved you. I, 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 people on this side here feel me. I said, if your faith hasn't changed you, then your faith hasn't saved you. Because the way you're going to prove that you know Jesus, the way you're going to prove the genuineness, the genuineness of your salvation is in what you do. It's in the priori priorities you have. It's not just in talking the talk, but it's in walking the talk. Hello, somebody. Oh, if I have time, I will show you something in Jeremiah 29, in Jeremiah 20, in J Jeremiah chapter 9. But I don't have time. Let me, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. But, but don't get this one wrong. Tell your neighbor, don't get this one wrong. Tell another neighbor, they didn't hear you. Don't get this one wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get this one wrong because your eternal destiny depends on it. Don't get this one wrong because your entering in depends on it. And the Bible says in Matthew 25 verse 10, and the door was shut. 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 So, Dick and Taiwo, I will not be wrong in saying that even in this church, there are people here listening to me who are prepared in getting their priorities right. And there are people listening to me this morning who are not prepared for the second Christmas. And the door was shut! Oh, let me move on. I'll come back to that, in that at, at the end of my message. I'll come back to that. Let me quickly give you the second preparation you must get ready for before the Christmas, second Christmas comes. Number two. Number two. Let me give you the second one quickly. Work for your eternal rewards. First one, prioritize for your eternal destiny. Second one, work for your eternal rewards. Oh, oh, it's right here beginning in verse 14 of Matthew chapter 25. In the second parable Jesus gave us, which is the parable of the talents. Some of you know this parable very well. It says, the kingdom of God 
is like a man about to go on a journey. Verse 15. But before he left, he gave one servant five talents to invest for him. And to another servant, he gave two talents. And yet to another servant, he gave one talent. Now, don't get perky up now to think, oh man, I'm a five talent guy. And then you begin to be jealous. Oh, look at him. God gave him five. He gave me two. And then what are we going to talk about this one now? With one. I'm a one talent Christian. No, 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 no. That's not, oh, oh, I, I told you I wasn't going to do an expository on this, but that's okay. Let me just say to you this. Look at the next verse. It says, each according, no, no, go back, go back. Verse, verse 15. Each according to his own, his own, Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Meaning, God will never give you more than you can handle. Can I get a witness? Can I, can I get a witness? If God gave you that child, if that God gave you that child, God has given you everything you need to take care of that child. If God gave you that job that you think is too way for you, that you think it's over your head. If God gave you that job, He will give you everything you need to get that job done. He said He gave to them according to their ability. So, when the master came back to settle accounts with them, verse 20, the five talent guy that brought back five talent more, you know that parable? was made ruler over many things. <laughs> Do you see that? That was his reward. Because what this parable is teaching us, Lady Marie, is that the master here is the Lord himself who when he comes back, he would expect a return on the talent he's given us. And he, in return, will give us a reward. Ever say a reward. A reward for what we've done. Oh, some of you still don't, you don't, still don't believe me. You look like you don't believe me. That, that God has his own reward system. It's not only here, mass that have a reward system. What does the last chapter of Revelation chapter 22, 22 verse 12 says? What does it say? Give it to me. This is Jesus speaking, and because it's, it's all in red in your Bible, if you look at your Bible, he says, Behold, I'm coming quickly. That's it again. Jesus says, I'm coming. He said, I'm coming quickly. If, you, if he says he's coming back, you better believe he's coming back. He says, I'm coming. Am I what? Oh, I can't hear you, church. Am I what? Somebody holler reward. reward. My reward is with me. To render to every man according to what he has done with what he has been given. Are you following what I'm saying? So, so back in the parable to the two talents guy. The two talent guy brought back two more. And he too was made ruler over many things. The five talent guy was made ruler over many things because he brought five back. The two talent guy was made ruler over many things because he brought two back. Well, see, your math and God's math don't add up together. Right there. You, you would expect him to be made ruler over many things and him to be made ruler over some things. That's why you don't get jealous of him. Because he has five. And that's why you don't look down on him. Because he has two. Because God is no respecter. Do, 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 you, know, do, do, you, know, do you know that parable when, when the man went out to hire servants? 
Oh, I wish I had time. He went out to hire servants. So some came early in the morning. Some came nine o'clock. Some came midnight, mi mid afternoon. Some came at three. Some came at five. And now it's time to pay back. And this one who came at six said, uh uh, Abba, Master, uh uh, Master, wait, 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 be this. Wait, wait be this, my Nigerian. Uh, master, wait, be this. Now, uh uh, I came here at six. This one came here at five. You're going to give me the same money? <laughs> come on, Abba, 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 come on, come on. Oh, the Master said, wait a minute. Did I not give you what I already agreed I'm going to give you? So if I gave him ten, for coming at five and i gave you ten for coming at six what business is that of yours somebody shout that's grace somebody shout that's grace oh i wish i have time i wish i have time mm. see see when i say i wish i have time i really mean i wish i have time follow, follow me so 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 back to the two two parable the two two talent guy he got the same thing. But the one talent guy that went to hide what was given him didn't do anything. Was made ruler over nothing. Why? Because the Lord expects a return on what he's given us. And he in return gives us a reward for what we have done. Oh, you're not talking back to me. How are you expecting something for nothing? Even in your relationship that you're in now, where you're the only one giving all the time without getting anything back, you know that relationship is jacked up. Reciprocity is the key in any relationship. If you're giving, 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 and the other person is taking, taking. I won't tell you what to do. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> Somebody, I just want to ask you. Do you understand that when God gives you something, you're supposed to turn what he's giving you back into something? Ooh, I'm telling you faith now. I'm teaching you faith. You're supposed to do magic with that stuff. You're supposed to say, Lord, this is my natural. Put your super on my natural to bring about a supernatural. Oh! What has God given you that you're sitting on? What, are God, what is God giving you? What talent has God given you right now that you, you can use as a nursery, as a nursery worker here at Wilma? We've been looking for a nursery worker for the longest while now, and we're saying we need nursery workers, and you're still sitting down there. What talent has God given you that you can use as a Sunday school teacher, as an usher, as a PowerPoint operator, if you know how to use computer? What does God give you that you're sitting on? You don't want to be a dead sea, do you? Mm -hmm. That just takes in. But never has an outflow. No, 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 no. Jesus says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Somebody here, I just came to call forth that gift of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, you shall be like the tree firmly planted by the streams of water and you shall yield your fruit in season and your leaves shall not wither and whatever you do shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout Amen! I don't know about you but when I stand before my God ha 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 I don't want to stand before him with empty hand. I want to hear him say, well done. <laughs> Thou good 
and faithful servant and I want to get some of my rewards too I want to get my rewards too how about you how about you do you want to get rewards you, you know there are some crazy Christians who say it's wrong to serve God for rewards no, don't get this wrong don't get this wrong I want to serve him because I love him but I also want to serve him so when I go through eternity I'm not going to be walking around empty handed uh, with regrets of what I could have uh, what should have uh, what I could I would have done I, w I don't want to move around heaven with less than God's best for me so if he says he's going to give rewards when he comes back then I want his best hello somebody I'm almost done I heard about this rich woman who died and went to heaven and upon arrival he was given a bike he received a bicycle as his reward a bicycle while riding a bike down joy boulevard in heaven she saw a maid driving a cadillac and soon a gardener passed by in a rolls royce and this woman was upset rushed to saint peter and said peter i don't get it how come i'm riding a bike in heaven and my servants are riding fancy cars and peter told her that transportation in heaven is provided depending on how hard working you've been and how good christian life you've lived so she went away accepting her destiny a few days later she passed by saint peter laughing laughing her head off and peter stopped and said why are you laughing lady and she replied still laughing i just saw my pastor scooting over on roller skates <laughs> no 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 not this pastor not this pastor this pastor ain't gonna be scooting around in heaven on roller skates i don't even know how to roller skate i'm an african man Church, the point I'm making as I close is this. There's nothing wrong serving God for rewards. He expects you to serve Him for your eternal rewards. Back to our story. The ten virgins. And the door was shut. And the door was shut. Stand up on your feet, worship team. Wow, welcome back. What a way to close. And in a very insightful series that we began since September. And we close this morning, giving God all the glory and giving God all the praise as our Alpha and our Omega. I hope you received that word entitled Are You Saved? Don't get this wrong. There's a lot of things we can get wrong and there's a lot of things we can afford to get wrong in this life. But there's one thing for sure you don't want to get wrong and that is your eternal salvation. Knowing that when the second Christmas comes and soon it's going to come Jesus is come, going to come back again soon that knowing that when the second Christmas Christ, second Christmas come you'll be ready you'll be ready and we looked in Matthew 25 the two things the two key preparations that Jesus told in this parable to help us to get prepared and the first is we need to prioritize we need to prioritize for your eternal destiny oh priority is important as you know that in these last days we can't be about everything but we got to be about one thing as paul says this one thing this one thing and i hope your one thing today will be to prioritize getting right with god and making sure that you have that gift of eternal life so that when the second christmas comes hey 
you'll be happy and blessed to receive Jesus Christ amen and then the second key preparation we see Matthew 25 in the parable of the talents is that we need to work for our eternal reward we need to work for our eternal reward oh yeah I know some Christians will say it's wrong to work for rewards but if God says if Jesus says I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me then I don't know about you but I'm gonna do everything I can to serve my Lord with what he has given to me so that when he comes back I will receive my eternal reward hallelujah it's going to be glorious I don't want you to go to heaven empty-handed I want you to go to heaven with a crown that you would have something to lay down before Jesus Christ's feet hallelujah why don't I pray with you right now as we conclude that if you don't know Jesus as many came forward this morning that before the door is shut before the door is shut that you would make sure without a doubt that you're saved and you won't get this wrong let me pray with you father in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for that person who is watching this broadcast right now thank you first of all for making them to come that this is their moment of destiny this is their moment of decision that Lord God they will not finish this broadcast without giving their lives to you that they will know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is their Lord by asking you to forgive them and by receiving you in faith receiving that gift of eternal light in faith and believing in their heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he was raised from the dead so father I just pray right now Lord that as that person receive it Lord that the Holy Spirit will brood on them right now and give them new life and they will move from life unto death in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen the Bible says hey I thank God for you for the decision you've made the Bible said that decision you made today has sealed has sealed your eternity for good that your life ever after will be a happily ever after one because you've come to give your life to Jesus the hope of eternal life and eternal salvation I rejoice with you why don't you find a good church where you can go and grow go and grow go and grow in this newfound faith if you're in the GTA here in Toronto or you're in Nigeria and you're thinking of coming to Canada come and visit us here in Toronto hey we'd love to see you whether you're in Jamaica or Philippines wherever you're watching this make Toronto your destination and make Wilma your new church we'll take you deeper into the Word of God and we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you hey better still why don't you come and be part of our service two of our services here if you're in GTA come and be part of our two services 845 or 11 a.m. and we will give you the best seat in the house we're located on 1687 Victoria Park Avenue south of Lawrence and go into our website www.wellmanheights.ca and there you will see all our Christmas program and Christmas activity of our services and next week it's our potluck Christmas potluck around the world where we celebrate our multiculturalness in, in our diversity we we'll celebrate unity and we're going to be wearing our national attire and costume and bringing food from different culture and we have a taste of Wilma we invite you to come and join us it's next Sunday December 16th at 4 p.m. we'll start with a, a, a wonderful buffet of meal and then we're going to go right uh, into our program as we celebrate with our Sunday school and our youth group with a wonderful Christmas production that they've been working on we love to have you and uh, please come visit us God bless you love you have yourself a Merry Christmas and hey we're declaring 2019 to be our year of manifestation that you begin to see God's glory and God's praise in your life in Jesus mighty name we pray amen <laughs>